It's the J.R. Joker Show. Now here's the star of our show and the co-star, J.R. Joker. So, um, I don't know, I've heard some people making fun of me, so i, I got to know if, if it's true or not. Th does this upside-down book make me look fat? What about if it's right side up? Huh. I don't know. I think those people are just envious saying that stuff about me. Well, there's certainly no doubt about it that um, we are an overly entertained culture. It just never ends. Uh, just, you got your handheld devices with the, with the pods and it's constant input. Of, of music and, I don't know, sports information. And uh, you do it on the way to work at work. I don't know, they're playing music and you're taking breaks and, and then you go to clubs and you got a huge television set and monitors all over the place. And uh, just, you know, you go to sleep and you wake up with it. You know, some people even play stuff during the night. They think they're going to learn while, while they're... Uh, sleeping, I don't know. It's just constant, constant, constant entertainment. And it just never ends. I just, would, what would happen if, if all these things got just turned off for a minute? You just like, you go nuts. You just grab someone and say, sing to me, tell me a joke, do a card trick. Can you sword swallow? You have puppets? Can, can, can you do hand puppets? Anything, anything. Entertain me. Help. You know? There was a time when entertainment was just at certain times, and you're mostly were working just to survive. I wonder what entertainment was like for like the prehistoric stand-up guy. Um, I mean, you know, there's no electricity, there's no theaters, television, radio, phonograph, nada. One thing though, they had fire. When they finally got fire, so they had fire. So. They're looking into the fire. Ooh, did you see that flame? Yeah, that was better. Oh, look at that flame. Whoa, whoa. Check it out, sparks. Did you, ever, did you see sparks? Yeah, my cave, we, we got sparks all the time. Look at that. Flames and sparks. Ooh. And then they notice it casts a shadow on the wall. So the first entertainer is probably a guy, you know, he could like, you know, do animals, and uh, he was probably a big hit. He probably had groupies, you know. Oh, I, I, uh, I hear Ook do well. Him, big hit. He, he, he to have own cave now. You know, funny, the uh, cavemen seem to sound like 50s movies uh, Indians. Um, so... That wasn't good enough for some. And finally, some hip teen caveman, he got green wood instead of dry wood that makes red fire. He threw in a little bit of green wood into the fire. And what did he, what did he get? Blue flames. Check it out. Wow. And that was like the latest thing. Hmm. There's a group back in the 60s, Georgie Fame and the Blue Flames. I wonder if that's related. And so a so lot of kids in caves that don't have green wood, they're like, oh man, in Ook's cave, they got blue flames. Come on, Dad. You're out hunting mastodons all the time. We're sitting back here looking at just red flames. And the next cave over, they got red and blue flames. Oh, come on, Dad. Well, what's with that? <clears throat> yeah, some, some cave kids are just never satisfied. And, um, and maybe there's some guy that, that, that stand up. Uh, you know, he, he did an impression of the tribal chieftain, and everyone dug it, you know? Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Orc huh, sound just like Gok. <laughs> him, him, <laughs> he had Gok uh, facial expressions and Gok body language. <laughs> Voice spot on. Ha, ha, ha. So uh, Orko was a big hit imitating the Tribal Chieftain. Tribal Chieftain was the first uh, art critic staving in uh, Orc's skull with a mastodon femur. Um, you got to be careful what Tribal Chieftains you mock and deride. 
Uh, so basically, I'm just saying, we got too much entertainment. And uh, what is entertainment, really? You know, I mean, of course, you know, you work hard, so you got to relax a little bit. Yeah, you know, we, we have a natural inclination to sing and dance and, you know, and move poetically and, and, and have, have motion. Um, so it's, uh, it, it's not a completely unnatural, artificial thing that's, that's been imposed upon us. But I mean, the degree to, to which it's happening, it's just constant. And when I was a kid, we had three or four channels, and we all know for the past 30 years or more, uh, there's been just hundreds of channels. Um, but that, that does increase the um, uh, odds of, uh, of success. I tell my uh, comedy students, um, TV out there, we don't call it TV anymore, just on-demand, computer, whatever. You know, and so uh, there, there is a chance. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I got a an offer from uh, from HBO uh, myself uh, just yesterday, and um, I think it's a pretty fair offer. I'm not a very good businessman, I'll tell you that, uh, but it sounds like a, a a good offer. They they say that um, if I uh, catch up on my delinquent payments, they'll restore my service. <laughs> 